Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning. Welcome to St. Bernard Faith Community. Strive to enter through the narrow gate. The important word here is strive. The dictionary defines strive as to make strenuous efforts or to exert oneself vigorously. <clears throat> Entering into the kingdom of God demands attention, desire, effort, willingness, faith, hope, and staying alert. We don't want triers. We want doers. We gather as the body of Christ with Father Perry. Our mass intentions and prayers today are for St. Bernard parishioners, Jimmy Hernandez and Elsa Adriano, both deceased. Please stand, turn off all cell phones, and welcome each other to this celebration. Morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Today uh, is the 21st Sunday of Ordinary Time, but, but we're celebrating St. Bernard's Feast Day, which was yesterday. Yesterday marked 98 years that the parish has been in existence here. And so yesterday marks exact two years until we celebrate our 100th anniversary. And so uh, instead of using the Mass prayers for the 21st Sunday, I'm using them for St. Bernard's Feast Day so that we can all um, be blessed in, in our celebration of our patron. Uh, but a very another blessing that we celebrate is the, to have new life come into our church, not only at this Mass, but for the next two Masses too. So here on St. Bernard's Feast Day that we're celebrating, all of this new life comes into the church. So I ask, Mommy, what name do you give to your child? And what do you ask of the church today for Sean? But more specifically... Baptism, baptism. You're asking to have your son baptized. In doing so, you and your godparents are saying that you are going to take the primary responsibility to teach him how to grow in faith and his love for Jesus Christ and to follow Jesus Christ all the days of life. Are you ready to accept this responsibility? Sean, the church welcomes you with great joy today, okay? And I'm going to just mark you with a little sign of the cross here and ask mommy and godparents to do the same. Wonderful. Wonderful. He's loving it already, huh? Okay. Well, welcome, Sean. Let us sing out our glory to God. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, 
Let us pray. O God, who made of the abbot, St. Bernard, a man consumed with zeal for your house and a light shining and burning in your church, grant through his intercession that we may be on fire with the same spirit and walk always as children of light. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I know their works and their thoughts, and I come to gather nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them. From them, I will send fugitives to the nations, to Tarshish, Pot and Lod, Mosok, Tubal, and Javan, to the distant coastlands that have never heard of my fame, or seen my glory, and they shall proclaim my glory among the nations. They shall bring all your brothers and sisters from all the nations as an offering to the Lord, on horses and in chariots, in carts, upon mules and dromedaries. To Jerusalem, my holy mountain, says the Lord, just as the Israelites bring their offering to the house of the Lord in clean vessels. Some of these I will take as priests and Levites, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responses go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to Tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all the nations. Glorify Him, all your people. 
From the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At that time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy but for pain. Yet later, it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So, Strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be just disjointed, but healed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, strive to enter through the narrow gate, for many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then you will stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, we ate and drank in your company and you taught in our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out. And people will come from the east and the west and from the north and the south and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first 
who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. I think it was 52 years ago when I was in the college seminary at St. John's in Camarillo, Bishop John J. Ward, Auxiliary Bishop of Los Angeles, came up to celebrate a Mass with the seminarians to encourage us. And he loved going up there, very social. And um, he gave a homily I, I never forgot. It was about four times I remember his homilies clearly. And he simply uh, said this. He was a great fan of Newt Rockney, uh, the, the coach of Notre Dame, big Catholic university back in the Midwest. And he um, loved sports. And he loved telling Newt Rockney stories. So he tells this one that uh, the team was losing kind of miserably. And so as coach, he went over to, uh, I'll say, number 36 and said, come on, 36, come off the field. Number 16, get in there. Can you do something? And he says this. He jumps up so excited. He says, I'll try, coach. And Bishop Ward had a big, booming voice. He said, I'll try, coach. And, and Coach Rockney said, sit down. That man's trying. We don't need another trier. We need a doer. Well, I never forgot it. How do you forget something like that? But I think it's true that faith is something you do. It's not just an idea. It's not just something interesting or uh, inspiring. It's something you become a part of. Do We're going to baptize this little boy. He doesn't know what's happening. He really doesn't. How old is he? Three? He might remember that water was poured on today, but he won't really understand what's going on. So his parents, godparents, you know, are going to make the promise to, that they're going to teach him, help him to grow in his faith every day. In fact, the opening prayer said that we could be children of the light. The last thing we'll do is give him the candle, children of the light. But faith is something that has to become a part of us that encourages us and calls us to become something and do something and make a difference to put our faith into action. So this weekend, it just, uh, I, I'm I like to say that I'm a serendipitous person because it upsets one of my priest friends who says I don't know what I'm talking about. But if I look up and the, and the digital clock says 222, two, two, I say, oh, serendipitous. And he says, you don't know the meaning of the word. I said, whatever. It's serendipitous to me. So, to that one too, see? So, um, Today and uh, yesterday, uh, some things happen. Tomorrow, something happens. Our school opens again tomorrow, St. Bernard School. It always happens right around the 20th, so in this case, the 22nd, uh, because how appropriately is St. Bernard School opening near the Feast of St. Bernard? So all these children will come back uh, under the patronage of St. Bernard, who is a great teacher, a doctor of church, so that they can begin to grow and deepen in their love for knowledge and understanding and in their faith in Jesus Christ. But in addition to that, uh, yesterday on the actual feast day, about 75 uh, elderly in our community in Spanish went on a retreat by this priest from Mexico, uh, and a 15-year-old girl was among the group, and they spent the whole day in retreat and mass over in the hall. At the same time, Kairos, we have a group of Kairos in Spanish here. They start Thursday night and they end today and then they come here for, for 3 o'clock Mass. The church will be shaking with their jumping and dancing here before the Lord in all of their excitement. But all these people went on retreat on the very weekend of the feast of our patron Bernard. And I just thought, Guy, this is just like a moment of grace. This is, this is really serendipitous to me. And we have a baptism now. We have a baptism of the next Mass. We have a baptism of the next Mass. And it's exactly what faith should be doing, stirring us up and inviting us in and sending us forth and exciting us, putting us on fire like the opening prayer said about Bernard, on fire with faith, on fire. So today, we hear in the Word of God uh, some of this. We've been listening to prophets for weeks and weeks, and one of the things that I don't like about the prophets is I consider them bad parents. They're like parents who say uh, to the kid, you better stop that, or when your father gets home, you're going to be in trouble. And they put all the blame on poor daddy, you know. Or, or they say, you do that one more time, and I'm going to fan your bottom. Not to say that a little spank on the bottom. I don't think it's a big thing, but it, not a beating, of course. But the point is, you know, a lot 
of parenting that I've seen in my lifetime, it seems kind of negative. It doesn't seem to teach values. I've often said that, let's say you're a man or a woman cooking at the stove, and you've got the ovens on and the stove, the whole thing is hot, and your little three or four-year-old comes in, and you can see they're curious about what you're doing, okay? So you say to them, honey, don't cook near the stove. It's very, very hot. And they say, but some will say this, don't come near the stove or I'm going to smack you. Well, I think that tells a kid, this must be very interesting. I'm not to say that. So they go up and touch the, the hot oven and they burn their hand, they cry out, and then they get smacked. To me, who's never been a parent, by the way, that doesn't seem like good parenting. People need to be taught. They need to understand. So I think this might be another way to do it. And it would probably take about 23 and a half seconds longer that you say, honey, don't come near the stove because it's hot here. Give me your hand. Let me show you. Bring them close, but don't touch it. Ouch, ouch, ouch. And you give, teach them the idea. So you say, don't go near. You'll get hurt. Okay, mommy, daddy. And they back away. Well, the prophets say, if you come here, I'm going to. God's going to strike you down. He's going to burn your cities. And the language is awful. But here we have Isaiah saying the exact opposite. And this is prophecy at its best. God speaks through Isaiah and says, I'm going to go out and gather all the nations of every language that exists and bring them to Jerusalem, my holy mountain. Wow. And what a message that must have been for the Jews, the chosen people, they're the ones who are first and who get the message. But God is saying, I'm going to reach out to everybody. Second reading, Paul is writing a letter, and, and I think uh, the people are reaping the uh, fruitfulness, uh, not real positive, of what was happening because the faith was being extended to Gentile people. Remember, um, the people that followed Jesus initially were Jews. They became Jewish Christians. But Paul, who was persecuting them for following Jesus, had a conversion, and then he went out to preach to Gentiles. He was the first to do so. And the church grew rapidly in the Gentile world. And so what began, I don't know how many, or, but, and I don't know percentages. But I'm going to guess that within 20 years, after he uh, uh, reached out to the Corinthians, the Ephesians, the Thessalonians, the Romans, uh, that... The, the faith grew in the Gentile world, so I'm going to guess and make up a percentage that maybe by the year um, 65, it was 75% uh, Gentile and only 25% Jewish Christians. So there were a lot of problems because these people, the vast majority, were not following all those rules and laws of the Jews, which were like 613, 14, 15, 16, I don't remember the exact number. And they complained, and they said they have to follow all the rules, and they had the first council, and they resolved it, and it seemed to work out, but of course there must have been some friction that continued. And so, in the second reading, we're talking about having to chastise the early Christians because they weren't working it out probably very well, and they had to have some smacking of the hands, so to speak. But Paul's interpretation says God chastises the people he loves. Parents, they love their kids, and they, and they punish or chastise them, or they teach them, you got to do it differently, honey. you got to do it differently. And that was certainly what was going on in the community. But by the time we get to the Gospel, Luke, who writes this about the year 80, more or less, 10 years after the second destruction of the temple in Jerusalem, so things are a mess. There's a lot of pain and stuff out there. But Luke was still somebody who believed with all his heart, like Paul did, Jesus is coming back any day now. Any day. And so you better be ready. This isn't the time to say, well, I'll think about it. Well, maybe one day. He says it's urgent. So he tells this gospel passage, and he says it's like this. It's like the master who's gotten up and locked the house, and then people come to the door because they want to come in. And he says, uh, go away go away. And they, he says, I don't know who you are. I don't know where you're from. And they say, well, we sang with you on the streets. We ate with you. Come on, you know us. He says, I don't know who you are. Go away. And, and then says that they will suffer like the evildoers. And they are just going to 
be lost. They're not going to get in. That was Luke's way of saying, in very uh, apocryphal language, apocalyptic language, that the end is coming soon, and you really better get ready. This is not a time to try. It's a time to do. A time to do. Well, I think clearly that message in ordinary times is what's given to us. And I think it's a beautiful coincidence that it falls on this weekend that we're celebrating Bernard. Because Bernard was a Cistercian monk. He, he, when he was 23 when he entered the monastery. Um, he came from a noble family. A lot of money, a lot of opportunity. He could have done anything, gone to any university he wanted to, whatever was available in 1260, 1290. Uh, but he, he, he decided to become a Cistercian monk. And the Cistercians were the strictest of the, they were like the Marines of monks. The best of the best of the best and the strictest, the most strict there were. And he became a great monk because he was very well educated, very intelligent, and very spiritual. He loved the scriptures. He loved the scriptures. I uh, put into the Facebook page yesterday, on the feast day, what I do every day. I do a reflection on the scriptures of the day, which has just been uh, a remarkable thing for my spiritual life. Of course, I prepared scriptures for Mass and all, but writing it down and Publishing it, in a sense, to people makes me do it differently, maybe more thoroughly or more communicatively, trying to find a way to make the word make sense. And, uh, and it really is, in a sense, essence, what Bernard did. He, every day he reflected on the scriptures, and, and he used that process where he read it three times and, and finally asked at the last time, God, what are you asking me through this word? What do you want of me? And the word began to form and shape his life powerfully. Um, he was a monk, and then he was sent away to form a, a monastery. Then he sent his followers to three more places to, to spread the Cistercian monasteries three more times. He was a great, great teacher, a doctor of the church. And I think that the charism, maybe, that is given to us through him because... We like to talk like that, like Catholics. We say, well, if he's our patron, what in his example is there for us to learn, to get? And I think there's a lot with, with Bernard, particularly his great love for the scriptures and his great prayer life. I think that that formed him to the, be the man he was, and he did a lot of things historically in um, working on an issue when there were two popes, in being part of the Crusades, which some see that as not so positive, in just doing a tremendous amount of healing in the church. And he was in a monastery, a monk. So I ask you, and I ask me, on this, our 98th anniversary yesterday, just two years away from 100 years as a parish, what are we supposed to be about? You know, I don't believe there's anybody alive who was here for the original founding. I think there was one man who lived, I believe, on 33rd, died about six years ago, who was actually here when they built the first churches. There was one on San Fernando Road, as I understand, and then they built the church with the school over here, and that became the hall. And then in the 60s, at the time of the council, they built this church. It's the most modern church I've ever been in as, as a, a priest. Uh, with no railings and all open, every seat you can see everything, uh, it, and it's it's a big, pretty big church. It's the biggest one in the area, I believe, and probably with the most seating. But um, I think that if we look back 98 years ago, we have to say this: once the archbishop designated this as a parish, Dominic's was just a couple years before another great doctor of the church. And that's probably the reason that this got named after Bernard, another doctor of the church around the same time as Dominic. And with the intention of, of forming a real community of faith. So these Italians were the first ones here. Uh, it was begun as an Italian parish. And uh, they grabbed on and took over, and they did what they had to do. They built their two churches, and then finally this third one. And they gave of their money. They dug deep. They gave of their time and their efforts. They gave of the talents and their intelligence. They gave of their working with their hands. They used to have men's club who would fix anything that the McNulty or the other priests would ask for. 
So they, they literally built, they built this. And who benefits us? I didn't do a thing to get this parish. I was welcomed into this parish after all this gift has already been here. But we are at this very special time. In two years, we pass it on to a new century. And what's our part in that? It's the same thing. We dig into our pockets. We dig into our talents and our knowledge and our skills. We dig into our faith and our love. And we want to get this place all prepared so that we pass it on to another century. And hopefully uh, another 102 years from now, people will be saying, you know, oh, those wonderful people in 2024. Look what they gave to us. Look what they gave to us. So this weekend, as we celebrate Bernard with these incredible scriptures, they're inviting us to be a people uh, in which we celebrate a living faith, a faith of doing, a faith of becoming, not just a faith of words or thoughts, but something that we actually try to live. So in that spirit, we want to bless the water and make some promises as we welcome little Sean here into our faith. So if we could extend our hands over here in this direction of the waters and ask God's blessing on these waters of life. After each of the invocations, if you would respond with the response, blessed be God. Father God of mercy, through these waters of baptism, you have filled us with new life as your very own children. From all who were baptized in water and the Holy Spirit, you have formed one people united in your Son, Jesus Christ. You have set us free and filled our hearts with the spirit of your love that we may live in your peace. You call those who have been baptized to announce the good news of Jesus Christ to people everywhere. And you call this child, Sean, to this cleansing water and new birth that by sharing the faith of the church, he might find eternal life. Bless this water in which he will be baptized, for we ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Parents, godparents, you've asked to have Sean baptized, and again, in doing so, you are welcoming him into this faith and showing him how to discover it in his life. So I'm going to ask you to stand with all the parishioners, and we're going to make promises for him, but we're also renewing our promises of baptism. Please stand. And you know the response is simply, I do. I'm going to ask you three times to renounce sin and evil and three times to profess your faith. My brothers and sisters, do you all reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? Do you reject saint and father of sin and prince of darkness? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Mommy and godparents, is it your will that Sean should be baptized in the faith of this church which we've all just professed with you? Yes? Please be seated and if you could bring Sean, parents and godparents. Now, he's big enough, I think, that he can actually stand on the ledge as long as you hold on to him carefully up here and bend over. And I think we're going to pour a little bit of water on you, okay, buddy? Come here, over here. Sean, I baptize you. Little, can you push him over a little? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bravo. Now, the water, it just evaporates. It'll be dry in moments. But we're going to place a little oil because the oil is a special symbol. Oil gets absorbed into the body, the skin. And um, it's a symbol of what we're really praying for, not oil, but 
God's love, His grace, His spirit, His blessing to be absorbed into His spirit and that He'll help him to grow to be, to be a man of great faith. So if we could just extend our hands and blessing over him. Sean, God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has freed you from sin, given you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit. He has welcomed you into his holy people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation and as Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, Sean, so may you live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. Amen. See this? I'm going to put a little oil here. Oh, good. A little more here, right here. Oh, good, good, good. Sean, welcome into our church. Welcome. Okay, you can go back. Please stand. And let us turn now in faith to our God and lift up to our God all of our intercessions, our prayers, and our needs. That Holy Scripture and the sacraments nourish and strengthen all believers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That home, heart, and hope for the future be restored to exiles and refugees. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That favorable weather and bountiful harvest bless the farmers and ranchers who feed our nation and the world. Lord, hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. That students and teachers starting a new school year may Christ and his truth the center of their studies. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that our community not lose heart under the Lord's discipline, but learn humility and patience through it. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our special intention for today's Mass, St. Bernard parishioners, Jimmy Hernandez and Elsa Adriano, both deceased, and for all our own intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also continually for the people of the Ukraine region, for peace in that region of the world, and for all the families and communities that have been scarred and devastated by the mass killings during this past year, for hope and for healing for them. We pray to the Lord. God of Abraham, you know our works and you know our thoughts. Gather our prayers and shower down your blessings we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Thank you very much. Pray, my sisters and brothers, our gifts may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. We offer to your majesty, O Lord, the sacrament of unity and peace as we celebrate the memorial of the abbot, St. Bernard of Clairvaux, a man outstanding in word and deed who strove to bring order and concord to your church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Bernard of Clairvaux, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her, by the example of his holy life, you teach her by his words of preaching, and you keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all your people. We pray in thanksgiving for Sean Xavier Renteria, who is baptized today and begins a life of faith with us as our brother in faith. And we pray for all of our parishioners, both those deceased and those living now, uh, all of our brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, that all who have died in your mercy, especially Jimmy Hernandez and Elsa Adriano, welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the martyrs, with our patron, Bernard of Clairvaux, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray together in the words that Jesus has taught us all as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let us share together Christ's peace. This is Jesus the Christ who has come to take away our sin and bring us life eternal. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
Let us pray. May the food we have received, O Lord, as we honor St. Bernard, work its effect in us, so that strengthened by his example and instructed by his teaching, we may be caught up in love of your incarnate word, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be simple for the announcements. The first is that we have our second collection this weekend and next weekend also. It's the I Love St. Bernie collection. There's envelopes, but you don't have to use envelopes. All of this is going toward the renovation of the bathrooms, which will be starting right after Labor Day, uh, the beginning of September. So thank you for your support of this so that we can renovate those and make them uh, respectable rooms for our parishioners. And we're going to continue with some other announcements. Good morning, Church. Good morning. A couple of announcements. Uh, we are taking registration for any adult or child that needs the sacraments of baptism, First Communion, or Confirmation. Um, we are in the back to get your contact information. Summer uh, school starts for the children in September, on the weekend after Labor Day. Second announcement is the St. Bernard Church volunteers who have been working very, very hard since the start of the pandemic are having a raffle sale outside. Today only, well, today, we have tickets for $1, and the winners, winners, we're going to have several drawings, will be able to choose from any item on the table, except for one, but, okay? So only $1 and come and support the church because it's all going toward the renovation of the bathrooms. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Anne Salazar, and Father Perry has graciously allowed me to come here and assist the parishioners of this parish. I have a caregiver support group that I will be starting again uh, due to the pandemic. We had to stop two years ago. Uh, it will be across the street at 1030 on the 28th for introductory and information. And it's something that I'm very passionate about. We have so many people in our parish that are caring for a loved one and are are very overwhelmed and sometimes you need the help and just the confidence and being able to talk to someone who's doing uh, the same thing that you are doing caring for a loved one whether it's a, even a neighbor so if uh, any of you have anyone family members that may need information and would like to come to the group uh, it will be once a month however I will take phone calls at any time. You can call me. There's a bulletin board in the back, I believe. If not, Mary has my phone number, uh, and she'll be able to give that to you. It's my cell number, and I will call you back. So I hope that you'll take advantage of the, uh, the program that I'm very, very anxious to get started here. I now live in Murrieta, California, well, of course, and it's 80 miles, and I'm more than happy to get up on Sundays and come and have this class. And uh, so I look forward to assisting everyone here that is in need, and also, too, if you call me, everything is confidential, but there's so much that I can share with you. So thank you very much, and I look forward to it. Anne, uh, uh, Anne, what's it? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but let me give an example. I think sometimes when somebody comes out of the hospital and they really uh, are, are in very bad condition and they, they really could use a hospital bed, there's funds for that. She knows how to get them. She knows where those resources are. Mm -hmm. And so you could, somebody can come home from the hospital that needs special care, and she's got all kinds of resources that she can help you help them better. So she is an amazing resource, and we are so, so blessed to have her. Is that correct, though, what I said? Yes. An example. Yeah, yes, that's a good example. Uh, there's a lot of times when you, a person will come out of the hospital and you're totally lost. They just want to get you out sometimes. They do a wonderful job, but however you come home, downfounded. You don't know where to start, where to go. And there's a lot of things that, that are um, available. It doesn't take a lot to qualify, uh, but... Um, if you need that help and support, please do uh, give me a call. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ann. Thank you. Thank you. I bet you can't guess where I'm up here again. Again. Okay. Now, today was going to be the last day to have the drawing for the Dodger ticket. The drawing, but we got one other week. But you know what? Buy your ticket today. It's 20. We are so close to our goal. I mean, we used to be like this. Now we're like this. And now we're like this. So please. If you haven't bought your Dodger ticket yet, they're playing the Giants on Monday, September the 5th. Okay, the Dodgers won last night again. So if you want to see a great game, because the Dodgers and the Giants are always fantastic games, come and see. We'll be in the back, $20. If you bought one ticket already, buy another. Come on. Because you know what? And I've said it before, and I'll say it again. St. Bernard is our church. Buy it for St. Bernard. It goes right to us. We, are the, we profit from this. So if you haven't bought your ticket yet, please do. Okay, and uh, to announce you one more thing. This won't be the last of you will see me up here. I'll be coming up pitching more stuff later on. So hang in there, but go Dodgers and buy your ticket. We'll be in the back. Thank you. Two more things. Uh, uh, three weeks ago, I went uh, to anoint a woman over in Venice by Santa Monica that I met uh, 43 years ago when I was a young priest. And uh, she's d dementia, but she was uh, in hospice care. And I anointed her at the request of her kids, big family. And then I buried her last Thursday. And uh, the daughter, Hilda, said to me, uh, I want to make out a check for the parish. What do we what, who would I make it out to? St. Bernard, St. Bernard Building Fund? I said, yeah, that one, please. So she gave me not one, but two checks, each one $1,000, which I thought well, I've never, ever had anybody for a funeral uh, give something like that so generously. So I was very grateful, and it's going to go toward those bathrooms. Uh, so every little bit helps, and, and every big bit helps, too. But I want you to know that the bathrooms and then the floor of the church, and then the parking lot. This is the exterior building space. This is the easy stuff. Uh, I mean, it costs money, but it's the easy stuff to do. The real rebuilding that I want to uh, try to accomplish with you in the next two years is what I call the infrastructure, or the, 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 the social part of our church. And um, I have a list that I hope to put out next week of about 30 things that our little committee has been working on all kinds of areas where people might have some passionate interest. For example, two weeks ago in the Times, I read about, are you ready for the big one, referring to the big earthquake? And it talked about earthquake preparedness. I am interested in that, but I'm uh, slow to, to getting involved in yet another thing. But there are people here, I bet, there could be three people right here that said, I really would like to work on this. So you would become a conduit to get information and even resources and show us what to do and, and what medicines to have ready and for how long. Is it two weeks? Water? Of what? And how often do you replace the water? There's so many ways that we can help one another and the whole community, not even our Catholic or members of our community of faith, but our neighbors to us. So uh, I'm hoping that you will be um, called and challenged and invited to respond by taking up one of these ministries and becoming involved and, and as we approach our uh, se second hundred years that we revive the innards of our parish, uh, young and old, that people will be able to get involved. But if we can have our godparents with a candle to come over.
Receive the light of Christ. Parents, God, parents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly for Sean. Uh, we're hoping, as that first prayer said, that he will become a, a man, a child of the light, and one day a man of the light of Christ. And the light is not a candle. This is just a symbol, not just, but it is a symbol. But the real light is something inside. I contend that he's too young. I mean, he, he can't make the choices, but all of us, we will make 30 choices today, minimally, either positive or negative, either of the light or of the darkness. Uh, uh, this is the only time I pick on the teenagers, okay? But it's my favorite thing to pick on you about. Uh, teenagers know how to roll their eyes. Nobody can roll their eyes better than a teenager. And so you say, would you clean your room? And they go, <sighs> that's not from the light. That's from the darkness. And although we're probably, most of ours aren't robbing banks or beating up people today, we make all kinds of little choices that are of the light or of the darkness. And the more that we can become attached to that light and that light fill us, the more we become positive, growing, faith-filled people that make a better world. And that's the light we give to Sean as we give it through you so he can come to know that light, become a man of the light. And once again, welcome, Sean. Welcome. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in Christ's peace. Thanks be to God.